Morning all, let's have a look at another great game, an immortal game, played in Ukraine and it became known as the Ukrainian Immortal, funny enough. So played in 1931 between Efim Korshmar and playing black was Abram Borisovich Polyak. So uh, it kicked off with E4, Korshmar playing E4, we saw E5. After knight f3, knight c6, we saw a standard royal of Pez. d6, a Steinitz defense. After d4, bishop d7. White now plays knight c3. And black plays knight f6. Now white castled. And black resolved a bit the central tension with this next move, offering some simplification. Knight takes d4, so offering a bishop exchange on d7, which is accepted. And then knight takes d4, and this leaves black with a little center, what's known as a little center. White potentially has uh, maybe a dangerous idea of f4 and e5 later at the moment. The d file looks good, d5 looks good. If black ever plays c6, then d6 might be a little bit weaker. Black has some positional problems at this moment, but uh, the e5 break is, is of some concern as well, even without f4. Black plays bishop e7 here, and now we see rook d1, intensifying the pressure on that d file and emphasizing that maybe e5 will be played if black castles uh, because of that pressure on the d file. And in fact, black did castle and e5 was played. So now d takes e5 doesn't look possible because just taking and winning a piece. So um, the knight retreated and there's a little bit of congestion here. It's retreating to um, e8. So bishop f4 just reinforces that e5 pawn. And black tried in this position a5. There are some positional difficulties. If ever black tries c6, well d6 will drop. And uh, knight d5 is going to be annoying after a5 because the b6 square, for example, knight d5, c6, knight b6 would fall queen and rook. So black already have some positional problems. White plays now a very flexible move, rook d3, flexible in two ways. A, if he wants to intensify the d-file pressure on d6, and B, if the rook wants to swing across to certain attacking squares. g7 in particular looks like a coordination square of queen and rook here. Black tries rook a6, which looks a little bit artificial to try and defend the situation, but I guess justifies a5. Now we see actually rook e1, as though the e file might be of some significance for an entry point in the future. Queen f5. Okay, this does leave basically a loose bishop now on e7. Black maybe wanted to try and generate some counterplay somehow. And there's a very aggressive move, of course, now. Knight d5, just threatening, in fact, to fork queen and king. So that's a priority to do something about. Bishop d8, which holds also c7. OK, now it looks as though maybe black can repel white's pieces, potentially with say c6 and if the knight moves d5 but um, things get a bit tricky now in fact white captures on d6 in this position okay and it looks as though well maybe you know knight takes d6 doesn't look that bad knight takes d6 means now that uh, this next move is a very very forcing move rook g3 threatening mate in one so what can black do about that it's basically also just provoking weakness now the bishop can't come in because of knight takes f6 check there'll be a pin okay so f6 is the weakness created uh, an access path here potentially but also generally this e file might be still dangerous with entry points like this in principle. Bishop h6 is played, another immediate threat. 
It looks as though black can defend this and tries rook f7. Just just about because rook e8 is stopped with this knight at the moment. Otherwise that might be quite awkward. If the rook had to go back then g7 again would be an issue. So white's got three attacking pieces here. And basically these two are pretty attacking on f6 and e7 as well. And potentially g7. So everything's really in an attacking setup here for white. All of the pieces. Black would like to try and get rid of the queen and maybe evict the knight in principle. But um, white actually plays a very, very interesting uh, move based on d6 defending e8. Elimination of the defender. Um, I wonder if you can spot it. Well, it's the prelude to the elimination of the defender. Uh, so if I give you 10 seconds starting from now, what would you play here as white? Okay, or you might want to pause the video. It's a bit of a tricky one actually, especially the continuation. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, let's go for it. It's knight b4. So attacking the rook. And it's basically a double attack as well, if you consider this as an attack, even though the knight's defended by the pawn. But um okay. Black takes that knight. And now the elimination of the defender of the points is queen takes d6. So this gains access to this this route to the king. And it's going to cause an awkward offensive move to have to be played, perhaps, if rook takes d6. In fact, that looks so awkward that black decided against it. He didn't play rook takes d6. Uh, let's quickly see if rook takes d6, check. Then check here is, is a forced mate, it would appear. So that's just not playable at all to play rook takes d6. Black tries queen d7. And this is quite clever, really, trying to defend e8 like this. If queen takes, for example, check, and black will be okay for a little bit. He's attacking the rook. But um, okay, white has another idea here and sees f7 as now the defender and tries to kind of virtually eliminate it as, as a defender without actually taking it off the board. So how would you do that? How would you make the rook on f7 pretty useless? If I give you 10 seconds starting from now, white to play. Okay, queen d5, just pinning, immobilizing that rook. A temporary elimination of the defender because now rook takes g7 is actually threatened. And again, we have that tactic if, if this drag and drop is accepted for the queen being there, then this is a disaster still. Even with the queen eyeing g8, notes, you know, because there's two rooks. So that doesn't help. Uh, so basically, here, black is in an awkward spot. There's a rook takes g7 threatened, which is pretty nasty. Okay, so he tries to un pin with the move king f8. This looks safer as an idea to unpin than king h8. We'll check out maybe some possibilities in the second pass of this. Okay. Now, uh, this is a very interesting uh, move. Indeed. I wonder if you can spot it if I give you 10 seconds here and I won't give you too many clues okay so you might want to pause the video or 10 seconds starting from now white plays in this position rook takes g7 wow you might ask what is going on here 
what is going on here indeed well we can see that rook takes g7 is making that rook useless so queen takes d7 just wins the queen and it's an end of game so what about queen takes d5 well that was played queen takes d5 what is white's idea here has he just blundered what's going on here where's the mate well i leave it to you as your final challenge to find this final move of the game what does white play here if i give you 10 seconds starting from now white finishes off beautifully with rook g8 check a drag and drop for the king to be on g8 here very unfortunate square and on g8 of course the king is hasn't got too much air with this pawn on h7 or f7 it was bishop striking across the dark square so the drag and drop king there thanks very much would have resulted in rook e8 check but black resigned after rook g8 but rook e8 just to show the final mating position is pretty impressive just bishop and rook like that that's the pattern to aim for some great tactics so fm Korshmar some background then born in 1914 died in 1978 uh, his opponent Polyak wasn't um, too bad at chess in fact he was champion of Tula in 1942 um, he was born in Pros Proskurov so he was a chess champion in his own right he just was on the wrong end here of a dangerous initiative uh, from white let's have a look it's easy to get run over sometimes with the black pieces uh, so it started off as though white was facing a solid opening but um, we have this kind of virtual tension central tension reducing move simplifying the position down with two minor pieces coming off two pairs of minor pieces white has a, a nagging advantage though here this queen is not bad it's not as equal as you might think with the queen centralized like that e5 is actually naturally supported and you know it looks as though the engine really quite likes white more than half pawn is is a significant advantage slight advantage okay and e5 is the strongest move here just drive the knight back using that d file pressure bishop f4 another very strong move a5 and then we see rook d3 as the preferred choice it looks reasonable let's see how does the evaluation change it looks reasonable keeps keeps it going for white as almost a pawn advantage here greater rook mobility the rooks here are disconnected for black the knight is awkward congestion issues like we've seen in some other immortals so when there's congestion it that's uh, part of the ingredients for exploiting black king safety sometimes now rook e1 is coming up as a crushing move look at this the engine really really loves rook e1 so we see here the move queen f5 try which might not be the best defensive try but it looks as though it's a big advantage for white already if rook c6 just bring this rook back not even going for rook g3 just to protect everything okay and it looks as though okay white's better but maybe there isn't something immediately crunching so in the game we saw queen f5 and now this move knight d5 bishop goes back and now is e, e takes d6 is our engine friend here going to find the move played in 1931 e takes d6 yes eventually it likes very much e takes d6 and expects c takes d6 which looks like a measly backward pawn to have to play that or an exchange sack with rook takes d6 so it doesn't really like knight takes d6 at all even though that would seem to promise solving the congestion issues so knight takes d6 we see a huge advantage now for white emerging here after this 
slight lesser evil choices not played so the lesser evil exchanging sacrificing the exchange but it's still grim it's still absolutely winning for white that position it would seem so knight takes d6 rook g3 forcing basically a horrendous weakness and it's leading to collapse this weakness after bishop h6 we see now rook f7 tries not too many other defensive choices if g5 well what would happen if g5 okay rook f3 is strong even rook g5 is is good here of course just winning the queen because of the mate so that's that's so winning the queen is is nice as well simple from a human point of view but um so rook f7 and this move comes up it comes up from the engine knight b4 crunching move knight b4 it solves the problem it knocks out the defender of e8 which black is relying on with tempo knight b4 if if the knight's not taken i don't think it makes any difference if the knight wasn't taken then again queen takes d6 forced mate in fact in seven amazing and the engine's coming up with this idea queen d5 so a takes b4 queen takes d6 knocking out a defender there and virtually knocking out a defender here without actually removing it with this horrendous pin when they say pin and win there's some meaning to that pin and win is like for that moment knocking out a defensive piece sometimes so rook takes g7 as introduced as a threat so in this position it's grim with a mate in six which is accelerated by the inaccurate king f8 f8 rook takes g7 and it's a forced mate basically queen takes d5 was played which speeds up things to a mate in three if uh, rook e6 was played then rook takes e6 here and the same pattern you know if, if queen takes then rook g8 again if queen takes e6 then now queen takes d8 and rook g8 will do for a mate in three so what a beautiful game it's showing elimination and virtual elimination of the fence overloading of key points creating weaknesses um, a very elegant tempo driven queen sacrifice with knight b4 so let's have a look at the final position let's leave the final position in wonder what could have been the final position this mate beautiful comments or questions on youtube thanks very much